Hi, everybody. I'm Laurie, Head of Developer Relations at Llama Index, and I'm here to show you uh, another set of new features in our uh, workflow support in the Python framework. Uh, the things that I want to show you today are uh, our new support for streaming and our support for human in the loop. Uh, so let's dive into what it is that I'm actually going to be demonstrating. Uh, what you see here is a diagram of the flow that we're going to be running through. This is a workflow. Uh, you start with the start event, uh, and then the code does some research, uh, and then it takes that research and sends it to a human. This is the human in the loop. The human decides whether or not this research on the query that the human asked about is sufficient to write a report about. If the human says no, then the workflow goes back and does more research. Uh, if the human says yes, uh, then a report event is generated, um, which actually writes the report uh, and generates that output. We can see that here uh, in this code. This is the actual workflow. Uh, we have uh, start events and stop events, input required events, and human response events. These are the new ones that we've added in this version. Um, we also have some custom events that we uh, used to control the uh, flow of the workflow. So uh, the retry event is generated when the workflow needs to go back and start again, and the report event is generated uh, when the uh, human says that everything was fine. Uh, we also have an event called a progress event, which we're going to see, which is uh, going to be written uh, to send continuous updates to the end user about how this flow is working, and we'll see how that goes. Um, but like any workflow, you can see that uh, we uh, subclass the workflow class, and we have steps that are marked with the step decorator. Uh, in this case, the event that accepts the start event, which is how a workflow knows where to start, is called research query. The first thing it does is it writes one of those progress events to the stream saying what it's doing. Uh, it takes the query from the start event uh, or from a retry event. Um, and the first thing that it does is, uh, obviously, it would do some research here. This is a dummy flow, so we're not actually doing any research. But you could imagine it using EXA, for instance, to search the web. Uh, or if you had a database of, of facts that you wanted to research from, uh, it could do database queries based on that query now. Um, then it generates an input required event. Uh, containing arbitrary keys that it sends back to the front end. Um, we'll see in a little while how the human in the loop actually gets involved in the loop, but let's assume that the human uh, responds in some way, uh, and how they respond is they generate a human response event, uh, which then gets picked back up by the workflow and generates and uh, triggers the second step, which is human review. Um, you can see us writing another progress event. If the human has responded yes, that the research is good enough, uh, then it generates a report event, and it goes to the third step. Uh, if it's not, then it generates a retry event, which means that you go back to researching the query. Uh, let's see how that looks like in actual practice. A topic. So I'm doing some research on the subject of the topic. This is a message that's coming directly from the workflow, right? This is a progress event being echoed back out to the front end. Uh, the UI knows uh, when it gets some research to ask uh, if the research is good enough. I can say yes or no. If I say no, you get, again, these are uh, messages, progress messages from the workflow saying the human has responded no, the human has researched it, rejected the research, and so it starts again doing some research on the topic and gives me, again, the same answer. So now I say, yes, this looks good enough. Uh, we get human has responded, yes, the human has approved the research, generating final report and the final report. Um, let's dive in a little bit for, further to see how this is happening in the full stack application. So we've got uh, basically two files doing all of the work here. One is uh, a React component in our front end. I'm not going to go line by line through this, uh, but essentially uh, what we've got is a form that when you submit it, 
it, uh, it opens a WebSocket connection to our local host at, so at uh, 8000 query. Uh, and it sends the, the original question uh, as a JSON object along that message. Uh, then it waits for messages back from the back end. Uh, there's three types of messages that it can understand. One is a progress event. Those are the ones that I was showing you. Uh, it sets the progress variable, which uh, gets uh, all of the progress messages in the array get uh, printed out here. Um, if it gets an input required, it sets progress and it also sets response required, which triggers some extra logic here, which outputs those buttons that we saw. Uh, and finally, the third type of message that it can get is the final results, which it just treats as another, as another progress message. Uh, it's doing some uh, error handling and cleanup work, uh, but that's it. It's a, this, the point here is that this front end is basically just a message broker. It's not doing any of the actual logic. All the logic is being handled by the workflow. Uh, so you can keep your logic very centralized in one place. Um, and then there's the Python backend, uh, which again is mostly a message broker. Um, it's uh, providing, it's a fast API that's providing a WebSocket endpoint. Um, it does to need to know two things about uh, the actual workflow, which is it needs to have those input required events and human response events uh, so that it can pass those back and forth to the workflow. Uh, but what we do is uh, we expect that the first message that we receive uh, from the WebSocket is going to be the query. Um, we instantiate our workflow with that as the as, with the query that the front end sent. Uh, and then we uh, stream all of the events that are coming in from this workflow handler that we created. Uh, if we get an input required event, then we format it correctly to send it to the front end. Um, and then the, we expect that the next thing that the front end is going to send is uh, a yes or no response. When we get a yes or no response, we create a human response event and we use the context of the handler to send stuff back. That is the magic. Um, the other thing is the progress events. The progress events are just uh, sending messages back uh, along the WebSocket. WebSockets are just easy streams for sending uh, JSON objects back and forth. Um, when the workflow is complete, i.e. when the stop event happens, uh, this loop will end um, and this await will be triggered. And so then we send one final message along the WebSocket saying that we got the final result and what that final result was, and then we close off the WebSocket. And that's all that it is. Um, again, this part of the uh, application is very simple. All of the logic about like how actually the research happens and how the flow works is contained inside uh, of the uh, workflow itself, which is pretty neat. So. That's demonstrating everything that uh, I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how to stream events to the front end, how to receive those, uh, how to receive those stream events and send them on to the front end, uh, and uh, how to demonstrate human in the loop with input required events and human response events. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.